Hi there, everyone. This is Planet Mitch from Planet5D.com with my 5D Mark II in my hot little hands with Magic Lantern version 2.3 mounted on it, which is what you kind of see right now. I'm going to run through some of the functionality of Magic Lantern, and let me just give you a little hint right up front in terms of a review or functionality. Man, you got to have this thing. Unfortunately, it doesn't yet run on the 5D Mark III, which is what I'm recording with. Uh, it does run on the 5D Mark II, and it runs on almost every other Canon camera except for the 7D. That's the menus, of course. It's blurry! Uh, and you can't see it back here. I'm going to run through that. I um, recorded a whole bunch of stuff a few minutes ago, but here's the nutshell. Uh, what drives me the most crazy? Well, there's two things. Maybe three. Two things. Number one, uh, everybody tells me that this latest version is very stable. Is it possibly ever going to crash your camera? Um, estimates are about maybe 1% of the time. Uh, I have not given it extensive testing yet. I've only had it mounted on my 5D Mark II for a couple of days been learning some of the functionality. It hasn't crashed on me yet. Um, would I use it for a multi-million dollar project? I don't think so. And it just shut off. Um, I'd still be a little bit cautious about that because it just, it just makes me a little nervous. Did I mention that it doesn't work on the 7D yet? Anyway, Magic Lantern does some amazing things. It adds some great functionality to your camera. Uh, things like uh, focus assist, uh, peaking, zebras, waveforms, all kinds of really amazing stuff. Not to mention it allows you to do time lapse right within the camera. You don't have to buy any like, accessories or extra software. Uh, Magic Lantern is free. I, I'm off the top of my head, I'm not even covering one fraction of the stuff that's in this software. But as I said while I was recording that, um, I don't understand why Canon doesn't add some of this functionality to the camera directly. Obviously, the functionality can be done in firmware. Uh, if the Magic Lantern guys can hack it, then Canon ought to be able to do it. And wouldn't that just be amazing if you could do your own waveforms right here in the camera? Or focus peaking. And if you haven't used focus peaking, you really ought to try that out just for that. Magic Lantern is free. I think you ought to donate some money to the guys to help fund, because right now they're having to pay for their own hosting on the website, downloads, all that stuff does cost money. Trust me, I know. Kick in some money. So the software is free, but it's well worth spending some money on it. Even if it's only five bucks. Why I'm still holding this, I don't know. Anyway, let's dive right into the functionality of Magic Lantern. I think you ought to try it out, uh, at this, especially with the fact that they, they've implemented a function where you can turn it off when you turn the camera on just by pressing the set button. Uh, just amazing because that means if you want to get everything set up, you could do your waveforms and uh, focus peaking and all that other stuff and then turn it off. If you want to get functionality of Magic Lantern and then and then have no risk, also it loads on the CF card, so it doesn't change your firmware physically. It's not going to um, stay on your camera. You do have to have it on your memory cards. So anyway, I'm rambling. Magic Lantern is cool. You guys should try it out donate some money to the, to the Magic Lantern group so that they can continue developing this kind of cool stuff and send a note to Canon and say, look guys, we want some of that Magic Lantern functionality in the 5D Mark III and all the other Canon cameras in the line. It should be there. Here you see my Canon 5D Mark II. This is not the 5D Mark III because the new version of Magic Lantern does not yet work on the 5D Mark III. I'm turning it on, and you will note that you don't see anything on the LCD uh, because right now I have the HDMI out going to 
the ninja, which is over there. And so I'm going to record the screen up on the ninja, and then we'll show you the finger motions and any button presses right here. One of the good things about the new Magic Lantern is that you can have it not enabled when you start uh, a session and you when you power on if you hold down the set button then magic lantern will not load on and you have to note that some of the button functionality is different depending upon which camera you're dealing with here i happen to be doing the 5d mark ii and when i press the trash can or the delete button that brings up the menus for magic lantern it starts off, you see across the top, there is audio and a whole bunch of other little settings, which we will go through. So it starts up in the audio section. Um, I'm not going to explain each and every one of these. Uh, many of them are, are fairly obvious, but some of them aren't. And when you see a green button next to this one like the input source is currently at a green button that means it is set and the red button red dot like this one is something that is turned off uh, in this particular case i don't have a headphone and therefore uh and i you know the 5d mark ii doesn't have a headphone jack but you can set it up with the special uh, um, um, headphone cord which you can read on the Magic Lantern site uh, for audio monitor monitoring on the 5D Mark II. Anyhow, so obviously the audio meters are on. Uh, why is there a red dot next to it? I don't know. That's a good question. Um... It, one thing to note, on the bottom of the screen, you will see as I scroll through, uh, the different uh, functions are actually explained. And if you happen to hit the info button, which on the 5D Mark II is right there, uh, the cursor where your menu is, uh, that will take you straight into the help manual for Magic Lantern. So let's say, for example, you want to know more about the wind filter. Uh, there's not much there, is there, in terms of words? But so you can scroll to these and and physically you can scroll to these and find out what each function does directly on the camera, which is really pretty cool. I'm going to turn on several different functions. The mic is currently powered. I have auto gain control turned off, which was a new function in the 5D Mark II firmware many, 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 many moons ago at this point. But you can also control that with the Magic Lantern. And like I said, if you had headphones, you could monitor the output. And you can also change the digital gain for the left and right audio channels if you want. There are several settings uh, for input source, and I am pressing the set button to cycle through those, as you can see. So you can pick a whole bunch of different sources for the microphone. I'm going to use the joystick on the 5D Mark II to go to the next set of menus, which in this case is the exposure settings. And one thing to note, and it's really kind of hard to see, right next to, let me scroll down to this one, for example, uh, the record picture style, you can see a very tiny little white arrow. That means if you press the uh, picture style button on the 5D Mark II, which is this button right there, right below the menu button, and I'll press the picture style button itself, and so you see some extra sub menus that items that you can change within the picture style setting so right now i happen to have my camera set on cine style but you can 
by pressing the set buttons cycle through the different settings and you can even modify uh, the particular sub settings for picture style right within Magic Lantern which is pretty awesome pressing the picture style button again will take you back out of the sub sub menu and it's kind of confusing since I happen to pick the picture style item uh, obviously I think some of these are self-explanatory white balance you can change that um, simply using the scroll wheel oops sorry pressing uh, on that particular uh, menu item with the set button and then using the scroll wheel you can change the white balance for example or using the wheel on the back of the 5d mark ii you can then roll down to the different settings like if i wanted to change the iso or the shutter speed and note that the uh, shutter speeds are rather unique uh, i do not completely understand all of the different settings and again if you press the info button you will get some explanation which is really kind of nice uh, there are some i scrolled down sorry there are some uh, special features with magic lantern to be able to do like it says instead of using 150th it's actually displayed as 148th uh, this is not a bug i love that little little blurb right there uh, 148th obviously would be double uh, the 24 frames per second so pressing the info key again to get back to the settings obviously you can change the shutter and the aperture the picture style we just covered there is an exposure override function which you can probably read more information in the info uh, it's it's a little confusing depending upon and there are several pages to this uh, for example you see right there in the middle this particular one for the 5d mark ii when you select a shutter speed the aperture or, or iso value is not available in the standard firmware and there's a red button next to it which i haven't quite figured out yet either you can also change the live view settings which are the same as in the camera itself uh, moving on to oh i don't want to change that leave that at movie mode i had pressed the set button which is why i wasn't going to the next set using the joystick or the scroll wheel on the top of the camera gets us to the overlay now this is this is where a lot of the really cool stuff happens okay it's all cool um again i'm not going to go through every one of these particular settings uh, but the global drawing one turns everything on or off and so it gets really kind of cool when you have that turned on and oh, there's where all the green buttons came from i had it turned off which is why they were all showing as red duh okay see there are so many different functions here it's hard to remember them all i'm got them all on green now so obviously there are zebras uh, which will allow you to see let me turn live view on um, i am showing you a picture of the uh, one of my photos on an ipad that was uh, antelope canyon and i i wanted to make sure that you saw there is a reflection there because i'm going to show you something in a second Press picture style, zebras, color space, luma fast, luma, RGB, overexposure, disabled, 70%. There we go. Why don't we? That ought to be pretty good. Right? Right. There you go. There are some zebras. That's much better to see. I knew there was something there. I knew I was missing something. All right pressing the trash can again bring those menus up i want to turn that off so as you can see focus peaking so if you're looking to um do focus peak which will help you with focus let me also press the 
uh, picture style button to zoom into the sub menu here. Um, you can change the color, which I think is really cool. I'm, so I'm going to change it to green and do the picture style button and then do this. Now, I'm a little bouncy with my camera motion there, but all right. So the areas that are flashing with the green dots are in focus, which is right. And it, and it only shows you on the edges, which is okay. Um, but as I focus towards myself, obviously everything sort of becomes out of focus. You still see a few spots. Um, there you see them come really into play in that picture. And then as I scroll out, focus out, outside on the window and the bricks, you can see that comes very much into focus which is really cool. Uh, the, the, the focus peak or the focus enhancements here in Magic Lantern are really awesome. Uh, and again, you can see this right on the back of your LCD and you don't need an external monitor. Uh, there is a magic zoom function. If I turn that on, obviously I'm getting a red dot, so something isn't quite right there. Trigger mode, size, position, magnification, focus, confirm, green bars. Why am I getting all greens? Let me do that, small. I'm not getting it. Okay, something I don't understand there. I'm getting a red dot. Um, you can look that up in, in the, you can look that up in the Magic Lantern. Basically, it gives you some special, um, views on the screen where you can look at the, the particular focus in a small area as opposed to the entire screen. Maybe I'll figure that out someday. Uh, crop marks. You can also get crop marks. You see the red lines that appear in the picture here for different crop marks. And those are actually set up with specific files on the um, CF card or the SD card. On the memory card, those are specific files that you load. So you have, you have different options there as to which crop mark sizes. Again, if I do picture styles, you can uh, you can show them in photo mode or in play mode too. So if you're a fan of false color to help you set exposure, then go to it. I'm going to turn that off. Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. Da, da, da. Uh, here's where the histogram came in, which I was showing you before without really wanting to. In the upper right hand corner there you can get a histogram with red green and blue also really cool is the waveform so you have a different set of sizes if you want to pick i'm gonna pick large so it's fairly obvious so there you can see a waveform right inside the camera while you're preparing to record. So you can see the waveform is changing, which is really awesome if you're going to use a wave, know how to use a waveform for exposures. Really cool stuff. I'm going to turn that off. And there's also a vector scope, which I currently do not understand. For those of you who use vector scopes and understand how that works, I have not done any learning yet about vector scopes. I'm just barely a novice on waveforms. So anyway, you have those options, and of course you can turn them all on or off if you want. So let's scooch on down to movie mode. You can change the bitrate. This is something that got a lot of uh, people very excited about being able to change 
the bit rate of your recording. If you set it, I'm going to press the picture style so we can see the sub menu there. Uh, 1.0 is the Canon default. Um, by the way, there is variable, which if you read the very tiny words on the bottom, it says uh, VBR, which is variable bitrate, is very risky. They don't recommend that, but it is an option. Um, oops. Uh, firmware default is what cam comes with the camera. CBR is their uh, bitrate where you, it's a constant bitrate which you set down here. You can set a multiplication factor and this all depends upon the right speed of your card. If you're using a very fast card, then you can move the bitrate all the way up to 3, I believe, is the top. Yeah, 3.0 is the top. Um, so you can change that. Uh, most people that I've been reading recommend 2.0 or lower, but it all depends upon your card rate. And so the bit rate will be writing more data out to the card. It's not more frames, it's not it's just less compression. If that's the right way to say it. Um, the Q scale factor has to do with variable bit rate and I don't know anything about that. Um, and this is a warning level that you can set when your buffer is getting full. The movie, I don't know about the time indicator. I haven't looked at that one. The movie logging will actually write a small .log file out to your card for each scene, each clip, with information about the settings for your camera when you recorded that particular clip. The movie restart function allows the 5D Mark II to do continuous recording beyond the 12 minutes. However, there's a caveat there in that if you have that set to on and you go past the 12 minutes and a new clip automatically starts, there is still a two to three second delay while the camera closes that original movie clip and builds a new one. Uh, the 5D Mark III, that happens automatically for you and you don't get that missing time. This record standby notification is kind of cool. If you do a, well, I'll set it to red cross cut. Uh, if you go into live view and you are not recording, then you get this big red square with a slash through it. Okay, it's a rectangle. My daughter would shoot me. She says, square. Anyway, uh, so if you're not recording, then you get the big red symbol, and it says not recording up there at the top, just barely. That's very handy, by the way, if you, uh, if you sometimes turn on the camera and think you're recording, and you spend 10 minutes recording something only to find out you haven't recorded anything. That's very helpful. Uh, movie record key. This will allow you to press the shutter halfway down to start and stop the recording. Force live view, if you, it, this gets kind of complicated, but basically when you turn the camera on, it will automatically turn on live view. Uh, you can also do the shutter lock up, or um, if you're going to do a time lapse, for example, you can set that on. I'm not familiar with the FPS override. HDR video. You can set uh, HDR video. Let me do the picture styles for the submenus. So HDR video takes alternating frames, one of them in ISO A or 100, which is the default, and the other in ISO B and 1250. And so it, for a for example, for 30 frames per second, it will actually record 60 frames, I think, or it goes 15. I don't remember which. Uh, and it will record one at 100 and one at 1250, or whatever you set them to. 
and then you can manage that in post-production to get an HDR movie and there are several samples out there on the web and it's pretty cool moving down to the shooting menu this is for still photographers again this is stuff that Canon maybe should have added in the camera because dead gummit it's possible because if Magic Lantern can do it so can you HDR bracketing settings I won't go into that the one that I love is the intervalometer you can do your own time lapses so you can set uh, the record a clip and you can actually have it set to do movies as well um, it's it's all pretty interesting stuff so let's say you want to record a a photo every two seconds uh, start after you can set a sort of a delay to start recording stop after 100 shots 200 shots 300 500 whatever you can set that pretty high or stop recording after blank seconds so you can also do it that way so it's that that's that's awesome for an intervalometer that should already be built in by canon uh, you the bulb focus ramp is also another amazing deal I have yet to try this out, but let's say, for example, you're getting ready to do a time lapse over a sunset. This will try to ramp the settings such that you will go from bright sky to dark sky and not get a bunch of really crummy photos. Really awesome. There are some samples out on their website. Let me show you the sub settings on that. sunset, sunrise, auto, or off. The LCD sensor remote is the little sensor that detects when you get your eye really close to the LCD. Or, you know, it'll put your face up there and it shuts the LCD off. You can actually use that to trigger an image. Also, with the audio remote shot, you can use a loud sound like it says at the bottom clap your hands or pop a balloon to set off the camera which is really awesome or there's even a motion detect when the subject is moving or the exposure changes as it says down there it's really awesome stuff that they've got in here silent picture takes you into the live view settings so the mirror doesn't flip up and down loudly and you get the mirror lock up also over here all sorts of I'm not going to go through all of these these are some incredible things with uh, focus you can follow all of those uh, just some amazing stuff they have built into this thing um, this is the display menu change the way the display looks clear overlays focus box all sorts of Screen layout settings are pretty cool because you can actually turn this so that it is upside down. So if you happen to be mounting your camera inverted for some particular reason, then you can change all the menus so that they're upside down. Isn't that amazing? That is just so cool. This is the debug menu. Uh, for those of you who are testing the Magic Lantern software, you got all sorts of options for setting those things. Although it's not necessarily debugging, sometimes there's an interesting feature here where it shows you what their shutter count is, plus or minus a couple of thousand. Uh, something that is certainly not available any other method. Uh, you can find out what the temperature of your of the sensor is you can find out what the ambient light meter says and you can also find out what your current battery level is and an estimate an hour and six minutes of how much time is left on the battery and then lastly there is the help menu um, this shows you all of the functionality which you can also get via the info button like I showed you before just some incredible stuff here in. Inside the preview menu, 
you will find some incredible things. And I haven't even explored all of these yet. Uh, the image review settings, for example, you can do some compare images, time lapse play, uh, 422 preview, which I don't understand yet, exposure fusion, which I don't understand yet. Uh, so there's some amazing things in here. Single press is 100%, so you got a quick zoom, you got a quick erase. Lord knows that sounds dangerous. There is some incredible stuff in Magic Lantern. I've skipped probably half of the functionality. There's so much there that it's hard to even know how to use it all. They have a great manual, they have great functionality. As I said at the intro, you probably want to use at least one or two of these features and so you should download it and try it out and if you use it on a regular basis i highly encourage you to send a little bit of a contribution to the magic lantern team and thanks for watching this monstrously long 30 minute intro <laughs> to magic lantern and thanks again for watching planet 5d